why I should read Soul in a Game. Well, first of all, you may have nothing else to read. So that's reason number one. Weak reason. Okay. Look, I'm just looking at table of contents. First section, student of life. First of all, it's a little bit autobiographical because it talks about how I came from Russia, my travails of living in Soviet Russia. Okay, if this is not your thing, I talk about parenting in this section. I talk about how I got my kids hooked on classical music, if this is your kind of thing. I talk about my daughter basically being a much bigger adult than me when it came to her basketball. I think the best part of this section is really my part about parenting. Yeah, listen, I'm an expert in parenting as everybody else. This is my travails to parenting and just trying to become a better parent. That is just a student of life section. Now, in Hell in the World, I talk about my travels in Switzerland, San Francisco, through Europe in general. And you know what this section is about? Is basically be mindful and basically kind of inhale in the world. You may like that, maybe not. Another section one day at a time. So this is probably the how-to section of the book. This is where I talk about why I don't eat desserts. That's kind of an interesting topic. The 8% diet. You want to find out what does it actually mean? 8% diet, really? Okay, but that, I have a you know, chapter on this. I talk about you know sleeping. I talk about meditation. There's a chapter here called Set Your Act Timer for Six Months. That's kind of an interesting chapter. On a more serious note, there's a chapter where I talk about personal financial advice that may change your life. So when I got married, my friend Mark, who was at the time 10 years older than me, and I was 28, so he might have been 50 years older than me at that point in time, took my wife and I for lunch. That was probably one of the most important lunches in my life because he basically guided us to go through life without having financial issues. You're looking at me and you're thinking, okay, this is a wealthy investment manager, etc. But I wasn't always wealthy investment manager. At the time Mark was giving me this advice, I was making $45,000 a year. That was not making a lot of money for a long period of time. And even while we are, you know, my family, we were not a wealthy family, we still were able to have very little debt and still have a very good life. So that was a one day at a time section. Then there was a huge section that has actually two parts to it. It talks about Stoic philosophy. And I would argue that it had a huge impact on me. And anybody who doesn't know much about Stoic philosophy, I think that actually will have a huge impact on you. Because when you say the word Stoic philosophy, it sounds very intimidating, but I explain how I learned and incorporated Stoic philosophy in my life and a huge impact it had on me. So there's a two Stoic philosophy section. That's one third of the book right there. Then you have two sections, kind of, they're similar. One talks about creativity, another one talks about classical music. And if you love classical music, you might like this section. If you know nothing about classical music, but curious about this, I talk about Beethoven, Chopin, Bruckner, my favorite Russian composer, Tchaikovsky. So you have that section of the book. And uh, creativity, I think actually, like there is my favorite chapter of the whole book called Art and Craft. And that is probably the most original writing in the, in the whole book because I felt like I created this brand new concept of art and craft. You will never look at your job ever again if you read this book because of this art and craft framework. Should you read my book? You, again, if you have some time, you know, a whole bunch of people recommend it, I guess. The Nassim Taleb, Wim Hof, Carl Bernstein, Morgan Housel, Jeremy Crystal as well. But actually, the list is actually much longer than this. But anyway, so that's my book.